For the past few weeks, we've been extracting lessons from the prophetic Sira for an intersectional approach to the genocide in Palestine and social justice in South Africa, exploring how the life and teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, can provide valuable lessons for understanding and addressing contemporary issues of oppression, social justice and human rights within the context of Palestine and South Africa. Now, this weekly slot has been focusing on a distinct theme derived from the prophetic Sira, connecting historical lessons with modern struggles and emphasizing intersectionality and solidarity. This morning, Sheikh Hassan Talib unpacks the role of non-violent resistance and strategic action in the prophetic Sira. Sheikh Hassan, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Haji Khadija, how are you keeping? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Lovely to yeah. see you. Are you well? Khaira. Very, very good. Allah's good. Alhamdulillah. And salam is also to Allah. We uh, and our listeners. Now, this this past few weeks, uh, Sheikh Hassan, I was just saying earlier, and we've learned so much. Uh, I, I, that when we started off, of course, you focused on the universal values that was in the first uh, in the first segment, uh, the first lecture that we had last week. Uh, very importantly, when you emphasize social cohesion and building inclusive com uh, uh, communities, and and the emphasis being on the fact that as you as as you as you took us through this particular topic, reminding us that there are certain uh, let's say certain certain practices that we have that uh, that. That we often, or well, let me put it this way, often disproportionately we we place emphasis on the sunnah, which of course we sh we should do, mm. we should we should practice the sunnah, but mm. at the cost of the faraid, mm. at the cost of the mm. faraid, and mm. and so as you reminded ourselves, uh, us that social cohesion, um, and and seeking and 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 always pursuing the common good, that is a faraid, that Absolutely. is incumbent on us, yeah. and that th even though there's no compulsion in religion, and that is that is to be emphasised, we are all siblings in faith, Absolutely. and and that is what what ought to be what ought mm. to be em emphasised. This notion of the of the common humanity, um, mm. after the oneness of Allah, that is so 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 imperative. And of course, mm. looking and you drew from the example of the Prophet. Um, and 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 we see how these values that we that we referred to during our first lecture, our first discussion, how these find uh, expression. So this notion around um, these barriers that we've created. Um, uh, uh, barriers that th these are human made barriers so when we talk mm. about race class uh, gender so it's also the obligation rests with us to not be complicit mm. in perpetuating and, and, and enforcing reinforcing these barriers that we need to break it down mm. and then of course beautifully so you've referred us to local examples in South Africa where mm. we can see this playing out mm. and then also that um <laughs> I mean the genocide that we've seen. We cannot now look past that, and so yeah. referring us to 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 Palestine, of course, and how we see how we, in some way or the other, have been complicit, and we continue to be complicit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Zakallah khair once again for the uh, introduction and and the re reflection on on the recap there, uh, Khadija. Um, yeah. So today we, whilst we are talking about the role of non-violent resistance and strategic action. This is clearly what the prophetic Sira can uh, teach us a lot about. We are not, of course, um, placing this conversation uh, at the nub of where the resistance is taking place at this moment in time mm -hmm. on the ground in the Gaza, in the West Bank, in Al-Quds, and now also extending to South Lebanon, and the need for the people, of course, to um, employ every uh, means and deploy every means at their disposal and at this juncture of course as yeah. was what has happened um, uh, on the 7th of October in particular uh, you know with the offensive against the occupation uh, at the time uh, is is a very clear armed resistance and this mm. is of course absolutely in its place um, not only by revelation, but also by international law. Um, the absolute right of the people to resist this occupation, this brutal occupation, and to resist the um, attack and onslaught and massacring of people's lives. And so, of course, the Palestinian people have um, demonstrated how uh, a people oppressed uh, keeps their dignity uh, intact and in place through this resistance. 
and how, of course, they themselves draw their strength, draw their absolute, um, you know, in, in a sense, psychological and mental sanity from this resistance. And so, however, um, depending, of course, on where um, people are situated uh, in this um, current time, this current point in time, we are located and situated geographically across the globe. And so not everybody is able to participate. And uh, this is something which uh, we pray for as Muslims, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do grant us the opportunity to be able to physically strive in mm. his path. Um, this physical, and, and so it's all relative, this thing about physical striving and uh, non, uh, non-violent uh, striving uh, is, is um, contextualized within this concept in Islam of jihad. So jihad is um, a range, it is a continuum, uh, a concept that, that spans across um, a range of, of meanings. And so when we then talk about um, the, 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 prof- the prophetic um, experience, the Nabi Muhammad وسلم, had been commanded by Allah uh, to wage a jihad at a time when he was prohibited to pick up arms against his assailants. And so very clearly in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, for example, of وَلَا تُطْعِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَجَاهِدَهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا And so do not acquiesce, do not succumb to the uh, disbelievers, those who are rejecting and opposing you, and strive against them, strive against them through this Quran, جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا a um, manifest and a massive uh, resistance or jihad, right? So here is a clear example of the usage. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in the Holy Quran further about وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ jihadi, And so uh, persevere and strive in the path of Allah. حَقَّ jihadi, A true jihad. These verses were all, Khadija, revealed at the time when the Prophet ﷺ was prohibited from picking up arms. <laughs> <laughs> we know the, uh, the emphatic verse uh, for the revela- from the, uh, in the revelation for allowing the Prophet uh, then to pick up arms only occurred in the context of after the migration to Medina. So Allah s- says in the Quran, أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتَلُونَ um, it had now been granted permission and had now been approved mm. of that those who are being fought against, that they repel and that they retaliate. So all the verses in the context of Medina referring to jihad is about this nonviolent um, you know, resistance. And so this is, of course, where we are uh, today as Muslims living in South Africa and across the globe who aren't on the plain on the battlefield, mm. on the terrain, where the resistance, of course, or as we also refer to as the axis of resistance, mm. uh, is engaged in this uh, military uh, military jihad, this arms struggle against the occupation, against the oppression. And so I think um, it's important for us every time to reflect on how the Prophet Sallallahu had to uh, himself engage in nonviolent. Uh, resistance and in strategic planning and negotiation uh, with his uh, adversaries. And some of that, of course, which come through very, very emphatically is how the Prophet uh, had to endure uh, this, this very, uh, 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 very uh, uh, you know, stifling, uh, socially <coughs> uh, sort of oppressive a boycott of the Banu Hashim clan, which was the clan of the Prophet ﷺ. So they then, the chieftains of the Quraysh, then held the Prophet ﷺ's entire clan responsible for ensuring that he stops with his with this mission. And they were as a group. And so not only were the Banu Hashim, but also the Banu Al-Muttalib, which was the clan of uh, the Prophet ﷺ's um, uh, uncle them, etc., from his father's side, all of the Banu Hashim and the Banu Muttalib, all of them were subjected to this boycott. 
um, uh, very famously his his uncle, of course, who was uh, against him, Abu Lahab, who was also referenced in the Holy Quran, disavowed his own tribes at the time. Now, this was like unheard of in, in that type of context in the history of tribal affiliation and uh, structure, tribal society. But his uncle, having uh, harbored this hatred, as the Quran, uh, in fact, uh, confirms, um, namely Abu Lahab, then actually disavowed his, his tribe at that time. But the two tribes, the Banu Muttalib and the Banu Hashim, were then subjected to this severe and very uh, repressive uh, boycott. So cutting off of food supplies, cutting off of trade, cutting off of uh, familial ties, cutting off of uh, fam- uh, sort of marital ties, uh, were all basically the ways in which and the Prophet Sallam and his, his tribe then um, withdrew from Mecca and they went into uh, uh, the, the Sherb, uh, which is known as the Sherb Abi Talib, um, where they then spent uh, an amount of three years and the, uh, under this boycott, this damning uh, sort of ravaging uh, effect of this boycott. Um, until the Prophet Sallallahu and the, 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 the linkages that they had within the different tribes had worked together to try and dissuade uh, the chieftains, the leaders of these chieftains, especially Abu Jahl, uh, uh, the ones who were at the, at the head of, of, of um, advocating for this boycott. Um, the people on the streets, the people on the rank and files who then came into the, 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 the harum of, 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 of around the Kaaba were then beginning as groups to voice their dissatisfaction, mm. to voice their disapproval. They wouldn't do this sort of individually, but in groups they then found strength. And when they gathered at one occasion, so there was this declaration that was pinned up in the walls of the Kaaba to confirm almost the, 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 the decisiveness of this boycott. And they then uh, managed to dissuade uh, these chieftains and get them to somehow succumb to the social pressure. Uh, in uh, Mecca from the other tribes, the sort of rank and file of the people in the other tribes who had intermarried, who mm-hmm, had relations mm-hmm. with the Banu Hashim, etc. And that was how the Prophet Sallallahu then eventually, after three years, having spent on the outskirts in Mecca, uh, in a uh, valley outside Mecca, they then managed to regain their sense of acceptance within society. That was for three years. Mm. And the Prophet uh, in all of these ways, of course, had to still withstand the ridicule, had to still withstand the, the, the mocking, the jeering, and all of that. And then in this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used these words when he says, وَجَاهِدُهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا And so by utilizing the Qur'an, uh, by, by, by deploying the Qur'an itself, Allah says, wage this jihad against him, this massive jihad, jihad and kabira. So the way in which this happened was there had always been retaliation or rather his responses from the Quran when they um, when they when they ridiculed him as being a madman, when they yeah. ridiculed him as being nothing but a poet, when they ridiculed him to be somebody who's lost his uh, you know his his senses and so forth, the Quran would come back and reaffirm and confirm no that this is the truth, that he's a man who is known for his integrity. He's a man who is known for his, um, uh, his, his, uh, his truthfulness, his trust, his, his, his acceptance in society. And this is who he was. And so this methodology, Khadija, is what the Quran refers to also when it says, بَلْ نَقْذِفُ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ This is Allah's methodology, which Allah places for us in the Quran, when he says that when we are faced by injustices, when we are faced by um, uh, batil, uh, the methodology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promotes is to say we strike the batil with the haq. We use the haq to strike the batil, right? Bal naqdifu bil haq ala al batil. We strike the haq against the batil, fayad maghu, and it, um, it, 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 yad maghu literally means it, 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 it kind of knocks its brains out. Mm-hmm. And after that, it will dissipate. The injustices, the wrong, the 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 the, the lies, the, the the untruths will dissipate. And this again, Khadija, in the media, especially in the roles that that you are playing here in the media, and 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 in general, 
uh, is how the countering is supposed to also obviously be regarded as an important part of this waging of a peaceful and uh, nonviolent resistance, right? Because always to um, uh, uh, to counter the narrative, counter the in, the injustice in mm-hmm. terms of the narratives, countering the narratives is precisely what this verse is actually referring to by striking the truth, striking the haq against the batil. So that that is the nature of the batil. In al batil akan as a it will always dissipate. It cannot stand up against the gravity of truth and, 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 and justice. Mm-hmm. So this was part of the methodology. But... The Prophet ﷺ was also obviously con- uh, very focused on the fact that in certain instances where there had already been, for example, armed struggle, even then uh, in, in the context, for example, of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, then determined, even though he had the opportunity to really now vanquish his, his enemy militarily at the time of Hudaybiyah, he um, he he actually somehow disappointed the the Muslims at the time because that was the first time that they felt very very strong, and they felt that if we had now marched onto Mecca and um, enter into Mecca in in terms of a a, a, a military campaign, um, there was no there was no doubt that they would have been they would have been successful. Yeah. They would have been uh, the conquerors. But the Prophet ﷺ decided, no, we're not carrying arms. We're not carrying arms. We're going into Mecca, and the only arms that they would carry is like people on travel uh, to protect themselves, etc., but no military uh, arsenal. And in that way, of course, the Prophet ﷺ intends to put the Quraysh into a very tight spot strategically, um, that they would have to be forced now to reckon with this new entity mm. of the people of Medina, the Ummah, the, the nation of, of Medina. And they had only two choices. They could either expel them and tell them you can't come or they had to allow them to come in. Either way, Quraysh was going to lose this sort of um, almost in a sense the reputational yeah. uh, risk that they were running amongst the Arab tribes and so forth. Also some very strategically outmaneuvered them. And this was part of his sort of uh, non-violent. The Sahaba are on record uh, to have voiced the disagreement to the Prophet Sallallahu in this regard. They felt that uh, this was, was the time for them to, and also the way in which the, the treaty itself seemed to have held uh, or, or, or have uh, non-favorable provisions in there for the Muslims, which was more favoring in terms of the Quraysh, uh, more, more, more beneficial for the Quraysh. But the Prophet Sallallahu had a, longer outlook, he had a long-term strategy. And this was how he also waged uh, a sort of non-violent offensive uh, by being strategic and by being sort of uh, uh, taking the long, longer sort of vision of the benefits of, of, of this strategy. And, and so, Sheikh, yes, you know what, now, it's, it's so important that we realize again, and in our daily life and in our society, we often uh, uh, there's often this disconnect between when we speak about resistance and when we speak about daily life and when we speak about politics and we yeah. speak about professional lives and in the private space and this notion of religion being confined to private spaces which is very much secularist understandings of uh, of religion and yes when we look towards the the uh, the prophet so 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 when, when we think about religion we often think about even the sira we often think about it in very narrow terms in terms of rituals Correct, yes. in terms of very explicit ways of being quote unquote yeah. being religious and then you point us towards this how the prophet uh, very strategically outmaneuvers the, the enemy and yes and I'm sure there's many other examples that you can that you can point towards where, where, where we see how these values that you referred us to uh, us to right at the beginning uh, in our first discussion um, and so I'm going to refer particularly to this notion of equality maintaining human dignity how imperative resistance is to maintain this mm. and, and 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 the idea that resistance comes in various facets yeah. and there's various manifestations of resistance yeah. uh, absolutely and so uh, yes the 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 the, uh, the introduction in terms of the values as you refer to and then of course towards you know the uh, almost in a sense the operationalization of the values in the previous segment you spoke about this uh, harmony and 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 you know bringing communities together being inclusive and and so the social harmony um, 
and 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 bringing that uh, kind of uh, coherence, uh, cohesiveness, etc. And, and, and the common good, as she has showed us. And the common good. Uh, in actual fact, the, the reality is is that uh, that is almost the foundational basis. Those are the requirements uh, uh, that will allow society to be able to resist um, in nonviolent ways, to be able to resist passively mm. against injustices. Because um, uh, resistance is 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 never going to be really impactful, and if if there is um, disintegration, if there is um, you know um, a, a dis disruptions or they are rifts within society and so in fact um, you know our one of our teachers uh, professor dr uh, ali al garadaghi uh, he has just been for the past two days or so i've seen him on um, uh, uh, on the social media and especially after the um, you know the expansion of 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 this um, occupations uh, attention also into Lebanon, for example, and 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 opening up that front also in terms of a military uh, assault in that direction. So, uh, Dr. Ali Al Garadaghi, who is the president of the International Union of Muslim Scholars, uh, came out very emphatically calling upon the Muslims to set aside these sectarianist tendencies that they have, people that have this tendency to want to, despite the gravity of the situation that they find themselves in, cannot find that uh, uh, intellectual composure or that intelligent stance to desist these tendencies of, of becoming sectarian in their thought, becoming sectarian in their mindset. So obviously in that setting where um, in Lebanon in particular, uh, the Sunni and the and the Shi'i communities obviously located within those spaces. And so Dr. Uh, Ali al Garadaghi was calling upon them to desist because that would be uh, the first strategy that the enemy, that the occupation, that this uh, Israeli uh, entity, uh, of course, would want to um, exploit, and that is to divide, to divide and to divide, right? And the more they divide, the more they can allow uh, 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 for a almost unfettered um, uh, incursion and invasion because the people will be too busy fighting amongst themselves, right? And so this notion then of um, uh, unity as we have described, of course, in our last segment and so forth, um, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the need to, to, to close ranks and the need to work together uh, in these kinds of, of efforts is of, as we have said, is of the ultimate objectives of the Sharia at mm. all times to, to, to bring about social cohesion amongst human beings so that when injustices of this magnitude uh, is being encountered, it is possible for such a society to very visibly um, and very clearly observe the injustice, very clearly and visibly focus on this uh, egregious, uh, you know, uh, act of brutality and inhumanity, as opposed to if they should be divided amongst themselves and yeah. fighting amongst themselves, then these enemies will forever subjugate them, will forever Absolutely. enslave them, like has happened throughout history. Uh, as I've mentioned in the last segment, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also highlights in the Holy Quran in terms of the methods that the tyrants, especially in the person of the Fir'aun at the time, deployed and employed amongst the uh, Bani Israel and, and Nabi Musa's people, etc. So um, uh, the ability for us then to, to then stand together uh, is, is precisely what will bring, um, you know, the, the enemies literally will bring, the, it, will, it is what is required to bring them down. Because that is the only way that the resistance will be able to have an impact is when everybody, uh, of course, stand together. And, and Khadija, as, as, as you have said earlier, uh, you know, from our current uh, experiences in terms of, for example, the BDS movement, um, I must be honest, I have in the last while felt um, quite um, uh, concerned about the fact that our voices as BDS in society were relatively mute. Mm, besides, mm. besides, mashallah, I mean, I know there 
who's been on, on Radio 76 in particular, there had been a PSE campaign, and um, that campaign was about, you know, targeting uh, uh, Philip Kravitz and and, yes. and the uh, businesses, of course, because of his role that he plays in funding uh, that genocide over there and con- having done so continuously um, uh, before. Um, the whole idea then, of course, of bringing that out to our people and being um, bringing that out in a conscious way, conscientizing our people. And I know that had been running uh, very consistently and continuously, alhamdulillah. I think it would be the worst um, indictment again, um, a, 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 a person in Cape Town who is a listener of the wish of the Cape to still be shopping, for example, mm. in Cape Union Mart or any of those other franchises uh, aligned to that brand, etc. But um, uh, and 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 so so. But other than that, I must say there, there has been so in our personal capacities. Yes, Alhamdulillah, I'm sure everybody does their bit, and I hope they do. There has been the clover, for example, you know, um, a, 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 a debacle that had somehow also been addressed, and that by the end of August there should have been no. Um, halal certification on any clove product visible in any store and 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 I must say I mean uh, here it, it it must be uh, emphasized that these halal certifying bodies should be acting in unison there should be unity amongst yes. them in taking that stance and not after the um, the 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 decertification had taken place that, that somebody else will now take the gap yeah. and and do See, a that certification as an opportunity. Sees as mm-hmm. an opportunity so but every shopper, each one of us, on a day-to-day basis, as we're going into that supermarket, whatever supermarket it is, we are applying our minds. We are making an, a jihad there. We are applying our minds, applying our intellects. Which products do we buy? Which companies do we deprive of benefiting from our purchases, benefiting mm-hmm. from our hard-earned monies that, 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 of course, we have to spend? And so those efforts are exceptionally, has proven to be exceptionally um, uh, effective, uh, but it does require that collective, it does require that uh, unified uh, stances that we take as, as society. And so I think those kinds of uh, campaigns that had been running should be extended now. We have to give more, uh, Khadija, I don't know how. Um, I know there's, uh, we haven't had the BDS sort of movement represented, I don't know, on, but I haven't heard it, haven't seen it. And so we we obviously then looking also at what's happening on the 5th of October, as you've said at the beginning of the, um, of, of the segment, um, that people, uh, civil society organizations have, of course, uh, come together. And uh, the idea would be is that on that particular day, we, we must just ensure that every single human being uh, who has uh, peace and justice in their minds as, as their values should be there on that day. Mm. And, and when we spoke about social cohesion, it meant that as Muslims, we have to disabuse ourselves of this notion that this is something that Muslims do. It's social cohesion in terms of every justice loving human being on earth should. And we've seen this across the globe, across the capitals, across the globe. We've seen this where um, uh, hardly uh, sometimes Muslim people are to be um, uh, seen. You, you found, alhamdulillah, that human beings uh, who are justice loving, human beings who have this notion of human rights really as part of, of, of their values have gone out onto the street. And this is what, of course, we should be doing on the 5th of March. Sorry, the march on the fifth of October, mm-hmm. um, in, in 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 kind of bringing out, of course, the um, the resistance as um, uh, uh, you know the 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 year since the seventh of October, and our standing in solidarity with them. I think this is important again from the the context also of the South African government, the ICJ case. There are lawyers out there in the Khadija. There are international law experts out mm. there who should be. Um, taking this particular case still forward. It should still be be taken to the United Nations where freedom, you know, um, uh, or rather peace uh, 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 mission should be uh, motivated to come together in order for countries to go in there, to just go into the Gaza, to go into Palestine, to um, push back against this uh, egregious aggression of, of the occupation. But I think all of those things, and, and just yesterday, Khadija, there was a guy, I forget his name right now, but he's also a former um, United Nations, a 
official. He's a lawyer, uh, expert in human rights as well and international law. And he was taking, he was talking about how it is in actual fact a legal um, uh, uh, sort of founded reality that these media corporations, for example, can be held accountable for their role in having supported the genocide in the mm. way in which they have, of course, um, you know, reported uh, on, on, on cases, the dehumanization of the Palestinian people in their reporting and the way in which they are forever, uh, of course, boosted and um, contributed towards the sense of impunity, the sense of, uh, you know, um, lack of accountability uh, of of the uh, occupation uh, uh, despite the, the 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 genocide and so that fact being uh, put out there and I, I've sent it out to also to many of my uh, contacts and so forth should be something that we as civil society pick up on but again we need those experts we need the international law experts we need the people who are in those spaces to pick up on these issues like we should be having these same people picking up on the issues of the South Africans, uh, Zionists who are fighting in the yes, uh, occupation um, forces there uh, uh, at the same time, because they have been, um, uh, it has been proven that, well, well, it's not been proven because it hasn't gone to court, but there are cases that have been lodged with the National Prosecuting Authority of individuals who are fighting over there uh, in a foreign military who are South African citizens. They are violating South African law and they should be put uh, to trial uh, for those crimes. And these are the kind of things that we need our experts, our legal experts. We need mm. our international law experts. We need our people who are able to, 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 to champion and drive uh, and drive on, on, on these. On these. these are all uh, nonviolent resistance campaigns that will certainly bring the uh, occupation, inshallah, to its knees, inshallah. Amen. I mean, so important for us to have those reminders, uh, Sheikh Iksan, and that the very fact that yes, resistance uh, comes in various manifestations and not being able to be on the physical battlefield does not exempt us or absolve us from doing what we can. As we always remind ourselves, we all have some type of skill, some resource available. And just very, very quickly, um, uh, uh, Sheikh, you're pointing out around the BDS campaigns. And so, yes, we know there are outlets, there are franchises, there are businesses that in very explicit ways, as you mentioned, for example, Philip Kravitz, and then we know about McDonald's and one or two other uh, uh, businesses that very, very clearly and in almost brazen ways. Very brazen. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, Discam for me is one of those. Yes. Uh, right. And uh, the fact that I'm a be honest, I mean, I went on to BDS's website. Uh, the word, and this is San Talib speaking, not 76, <laughs> in case anybody takes uh, issue with that. Um, uh, it's not it's not on the BDS's website. I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, this can per se, but I mean, we have seen how this uh, owner of this business, yeah. have been as brazen and as taunting, yes, exactly. You know? Now, that's for me the thing they, yeah. they're baiting, they taunting, yeah. and so and so, yeah, you know what, now, um. It's really important for us to have these conversations and those of us um, who continue to, to to purchase and spend your heart and money there, ask yourself that question because it's not about being Muslim, it's about being a human being. Absolutely. It's absolutely about being a human being and keeping in mind what's happening in real time. Sheikh Hassan, always a pleasure and a privilege. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.